And any moment of difficulty in the life of the Prophet ﷺ is more difficult for us to bear and to hear than any difficulties of ours. And this is why the Sahaba al-Kiram gave us the greatest example of love and hub and ta'azim of the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. And we follow in their footsteps, and we aim to follow in the footsteps of the They love the Prophet Muhammad The greatest quality was that. That was their greatest quality. That they saw him or he saw them whilst they were in the state of love of the Prophet Muhammad And alhamdulillah, this moment that we are here, gathered in the masjid, the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Many of you may have heard this hadith. The Prophet comes out upon a circle of his companions. There's a circle of companions and they're gathered together. Another simple way of putting it, what are you doing here? Why are you gathered here? They said that we are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what he has guided us to. In other words, he guided us to Islam, he granted us Iman, we're thanking him for that. We're saying Alhamdulillah. We're speaking to one another and we're expressing how blessed we are to be guided by Islam. That's number one. And we're thanking him for sending you to us we're thanking him for sending you, Ya Rasulullah, to us. Now the Prophet ﷺ, according to the understanding of the hadith, is something new that they were doing. It wasn't something that was pre-planned. They didn't have permission to do this. The Prophet ﷺ didn't say to him, where's your delete for doing that? Which ayah of the Quran are you following? Which hadith are you doing that in accordance with? When did I tell you that you could sit here and do this? He never asked him. The Prophet ﷺ says, take an oath by Allah that that's why you're sat here. And they say, Ya Rasulullah, this is, this is the only reason. This is why we're sat here. There's no other reason. We're not here to do business. We're not here for the food. Afterwards, there's no food arranged afterwards. We're not here for anything else. This is the only reason. We gathered here to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Iman and for you, Ya Rasulullah. And so now, the Prophet ﷺ says, I hold you witness that I did not make you take an oath because I do not believe you. And this is another lesson that we learned that all of the Sahaba are Udul. They are people of trustworthiness. The Prophet ﷺ is clarifying this for us. He's giving us a principle that look, my Sahaba, any reports that they give, they're trustworthy in them. There's no question on their integrity. But he said that I'm making you take an oath because Sayyidina Jibreel ﷺ has just come to me and told me that Allah is boasting about you in the heavens. Because of this act that you are doing, because you are expressing your joy at Allah sending me to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is manifesting as is worthy for his rank and his transcendence. He is expressing his happiness with you. And so this is the fruit and this is the benefit of gathering to express your joy in any way for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. But we must ensure that our intentions are correct. And I can see a mixed gathering, mainly children. And mashallah, children are innocent and children are blessed. And children, the greatest gift that we can give them is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam, especially in this day and age. In this day and age, the greatest protector, the greatest defender, the greatest preservation of your child is that you'd raise them on the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and the family of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam and the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the awliya and kiram of this ummah. This is absolutely crucial. And you may hear this often. People say, you know, do the children know the names of more footballers and more uh, famous personalities in this day and age that they know about Sahaba. If that's a reality, if that's the truth, then we should lament on our state. Yeah, we should seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can it be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the Prophet sallallahu gave us 124,000 Prophets, gave us 25 he's mentioned specifically in the Quran, gave us over 100,000 Sahaba al kiram and we know more names of personalities in this day and age that would be of no benefit. MashaAllah, you just heard the speaker before me, may Allah bless him and increase him, that these people their legacy lasts as long as their life. After that, even then, maybe a few years afterwards, it's finished, it's gone. There will come somebody that's greater than them. Whether it's a footballer, there'll be a better footballer that will come with them than them. If it was a boxer, there's a greater boxer than them. Yeah, they will come and go, their time comes and goes, but the Prophet's rank is sublime. That since he has come, in fact, even before he came, 
His praise preceded him sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He is that unique individual. He didn't even arrive yet and people are praising him. Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam is making tawassul by his name. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is intending that he be from his ummah. What kind of an individual is this? What kind of supremacy does he have? What kind of majesty does he carry? What kind of beauty does he hold? His beauty, his majesty, his, his sublime nature is transcendent beyond the words that we can express or we can say. And so the Prophet sallallahu he is that individual. Over 1400 years have passed and yet nobody has been able to find any individual. And listen to this very carefully. Not only that equals him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but that even equals him in even one of his qualities. At least you may be able to say, okay, there was this great individual and there's somebody who's come after him and he is more intelligent than him, he's more beautiful. He may not have all of the other qualities, but in this one quality is better than him. Not even in a single quality has there ever come an individual. The Fatih of Mecca was probably the greatest day of philanthropy that the world has ever seen. Never has, has the world seen anybody manifest such majesty and such generosity in their entire life. Prophet to those who were his enemies, to those who just entered into Islam, he gives them an entire valley of cattle, he gives it to them. And they go away. And the Prophet forgives people who were a means of the death of members of his own family. Has history ever seen that? Has this day made ever seen that? It's never seen something like that. And so when we celebrate the life of the Prophet, our intention is what? that we must preserve the life of the Prophet It is absolutely essential. In another way of putting it, is our preservation is only as we are protected in this world and in the hereafter. The more that we forget him, the more we are forgotten. That's the reality. You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of no need of us. The only reason we can say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us is because of, that's the only reason we, you can love Allah as much as you want. Does not mean he has to love you? Yeah. We have no reason to be loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're deficient, we're flawed, we're sinful. We're forgetful, we forget him. Why should Allah love us? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a reason that even with your sins, even with your deficiencies, even with your flaws, there is a reason I will give you by which I will love you. And what is that? That you follow the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi the more of the Prophet وسلم, that manifests from us, the more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us when we commit sins, what does Allah tell us to do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if they came to you. Look at this. Our istighfar is only accepted because it's connected with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's it. That's the reason. He is the reason why we are worth anything. What is our worth? Our worth is in accordance to the amount of sin that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam within us. That is the amount of worth. And if you really want to see the brilliance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, know that all of these illustrious individuals that we have praised over the ages, from the time of the Sahaba and Kiram to this day, from the Sahaba to the Tabi'een, the likes of Sayyidina Ali Karim Allah wa Kareem, the likes of Sayyidina Hassan al Basri radiallahu ta'ala an, the likes of Sayyidina Shaykh Abdul Qadir al Jilani, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sayyidina Ma'aruf al Fikarfi, Sayyidina Abu Hassan al Shabri, the Prophet Haddad, the list goes on. The list goes on. Every single one of them is being carried by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You have to understand the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you can't. And this is why our entire life should be spent celebrating the gift of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We don't realize what we have. And we will never truly realize what we have. We will realize more so, even though even then we won't truly realize, we will realize more so on the day of judgment. And this is why our Shaykh has said that Habib Umar, Allah, he says that people have an issue with the celebration of the Prophet in this world, then what will happen when they see his celebration on the day of judgment? When they see him on Maqam al Mahmood, when they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling him, that you raise your head and make dua will be accepted. Then what will happen to that? If they can't handle this, how will they be able to handle that? This is the reality of what we don't celebrate. He says in his moment, he says, Allah, he says, 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself has praised him. So our words don't even equal praise or noblehood to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa ala alayhi wa ala alayhi The shaytan will try and snatch him away from you. They will give you phones and they will make you think about cars and they will make you think about being a footballer or this, that or the other or whatever else. All of that is good if you use it in the service of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa ala When you think about getting a phone, what you should be thinking is how am I going to use this phone to increase my closeness to Allah and my love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa ala Otherwise it's not worth it. What worth it is if this phone takes me further away from Allah and distances me from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa throw it in the bin. Get rid of it. It's not worth it. And forget the phone because the phone isn't going to come with you in the grave. But the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa if you have a true connection with him, he will benefit you in the grave, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alayhi wa He benefits you in the most difficult times when even those you think are close to you, even they will run away from you. They will leave you. They, your family will bury you in the grave. And they will stay with you as long as they can, but at some point they will leave you. They're not going to stay there forever. They're going to leave you. When you stand on the day of judgment, and it will be that time when everybody is saying, nafsi, nafsi. Everybody is looking after themselves. We hear from the Quran and Kareem a description of that day that even mothers and parents, they will run away from each other. No brother will come to your rescue. They're, they're going to say, who are you? I don't even know you. That's the day of terror. That's how scared people will be. Who comes to the rescue of humanity? Who comes to the rescue of the Muslims? Who comes to the rescue of the sinful ones? Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He comes. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam goes into a sajda and he praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that Allah has never been praised. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to raise his head and to make dua, and the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to intercession. And from the beginning of that day now is accepted. And so he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most crucial being, somebody who's worthy of writing the book of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And you read about him, and you learn about him, you make notes, and you make mind maps, you make posters if that helps you to remember about his life. Compete with one another, have competitions with one another. Who knows more about the Prophet? I've read this about him. What do you know? How many facts can you tell me about the Prophet? Have competitions with each other. That's number one. Then we learn about him. Number two, try and be like him. If you want to have respect, if you want to have love, if you want to be esteemed, and we don't do it for that reason, our intention is that we do it for him because he's worthy of it. He's worthy of it. But if you want any benefit in this world and in the hereafter, and if you want to be a benefit to the Ummah, if you want to be a benefit to your family, if you want to, inshallah, be a means of intercession for your family on the Day of Judgment, imagine that because you love the Prophet so much, Allah says to you, you can take whoever you want to gender with you. You just make dua for them, inshallah, they'll be forgiven. That is the rank of the Ummah al kiram How did they arrive at that? Because of their hum. And the ittiba' of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So they loved the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and they followed him. And so the next thing that we do is we try and be like him. Try and grow your hair like him. Try and dress like him. Try and smile like him. Try and forgive like him. Try and be gentle with people like him. Try and be patient like him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be obedient to your parents like he has commanded us to do. Be loving towards youngsters and children. Make life easy for those around you. Be good to your neighbors. If you see something which is Dirty, clean it. If you see something harmful, remove it. If you have money and somebody is in need of it, be generous, give it to them. There is nothing but beauty that comes from the Prophet This is what we need to do. And then thirdly, that we teach others. I guarantee you, the young children in this room, do not be shy of being a Muslim. When you go to school, be proud that you're a Muslim. Say, Alhamdulillah. <clears throat> when you go to school, begin your lessons with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Begin this, begin with this word of you in your lessons. Begin with Surah Al-Fatiha. When you're in your playground with your Muslim friends, say assalamu alaykum to each other. Don't say hello and bye and how are you? Say assalamu alaykum wa alaykum as Have gatherings in your school, in your playground, where you, where you ask each other questions about Islam that, that, that you have learned. And speak to your non-Muslim friends about Islam. Don't be shy. They may speak to you about television and YouTube and what they saw on Facebook, you talk to them about the Prophet Muhammad Ask them, do you know the Prophet Muhammad 
And this, I want to teach you this about the Prophet Sallallahu You should get to learn about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Teach them about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he's the greatest bushra. He's the greatest news that we have ever heard about Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So there's nothing, when you love something, wherever you go, you want to talk about it. Yeah? You're at home, you want to talk about that thing. You're with your friends, you talk about that thing. You're on the internet, you mention that thing. You can't help it. You put on your status, whatever happens, you want to re recollect and you want to remind yourself and you want to re-engage with that joy that you have. And so our greatest happiness is the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu yes. And we want to share it with as many people as we can. And many children, your age, 12, 13, 15, 16, many of them have accepted Islam. Yeah, the children that have come, they have accepted Islam because somebody told, told them about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu but along with telling them about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, make sure you are behaving like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as much as you can. You're not racist, you're not disrespectful, you don't swear, you don't lie, right? you don't bully people. When they see you as Muslims, there should be no child, I'm saying this to the youth, I'm saying this to the children, I'm saying this to the adults as well. There should be nobody that ever thinks anything bad about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because they've seen something bad in us. That would be the greatest harm that we cause to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because somebody may say, are oh, these Muslims, they're like this or they're like that. They speak ill of us. Why? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never gave a single excuse. Even his enemies praised him. Even his enemies praised him. They couldn't help him. They said, a Sadiq, an Ameen. Even in their disputes, they would take the judgment of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They knew that he was not a liar, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he lived his life entirely in purity, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because of our actions. People blame him because of us. He is free. He has been elevated, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we need to make sure that with our actions, with the way that we speak, the way that we treat people, Muslim or non Muslim, your teachers, your teachers should see, mashallah, these Muslim children, they respect us. These are good children. And we want them to say and ask your parents, why do your children behave like this? They're the best children that we have. And we want your parents to say because they know about the Prophet Muhammad and they follow the Prophet Muhammad This is the greatest way that we can show and celebrate the life of the Prophet Yes, the moment and the month of Rabi'ul Awal, we remind ourselves. Just like in the month of Ramadan. You know, those people who have issues with an increase in the reminder about the Prophet in the month of Rabi'ul Awal, we ask them, what do you do in Ramadan? What happens in Ramadan? You increase your connection with the Quran. You just get off the Ramadan, oh, the reminds us of the Quran al -Kareem. When the month of Rabi'ul Awal comes, it reminds us of Sahib al Quran al -Kareem. That part which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises and says, No, then Zanna had al Quran ala Jabri Rabbi. That Ayah's praise of the Quran was revealed upon a mountain, it would have been taken, it would have turned to dust, it would be ashes. The heart of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa carries this Quran in its entirety, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ala alayhi wa sallam. And so when we when we're living our life and the month of Rabi al Awal comes, how can we not remember? How can we not feel remorseful that we have neglected this way? That's number one. That's what Rabi al Awal should bring in. It's a pain in our heart. How did Rabi al Awal? We remember him more, we talk about him more, we celebrate him more, we praise him more. And then before Rabi al Awal and the other Awal, we continue to celebrate the life of the Prophet Sallallahu and we pray that our life ends and guides many non Muslims to you. And through you, I mean, I mean, I put all the aspects uh, of the life of the greatest one, Sayyidina Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi wa Salatu wa Salam wa Ala Nabi. About 10 years ago or so, my name is Muhammad Al Ayyub Salibur. About 10 years ago, I was in the same position as a lot of you children here. So a lot of you guys sat here down here. I was in the exact same position as you as well. And say you do yourself as well. And Mustafa said as well, I like teachers as well. Just like they don't teach us, they like teachers as well. So I was in the same position as, as well as you in this madrasa. And that's why I have love for the madrasa as well. For both the academy as well. And you know, them years, believe it or not, at that time, when you're that old, you want to grow up. It's true, isn't it? How many of you all want to be big? 
Abdullah Ali, so this prize will be given in the Madrasa House of the Universal. The final category, the final level was held for uh, the ages of 15 to 16. Uh, and this goes to Safiya Sabra. Safiya Sabra? He's not here, so. Okay, he'll, he'll be given his part as well, inshallah, in the Madrasa House. So I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the, the blessing of the Na'al Sharif, Allah ta'ala allows. Sorry, I forgot to show something else. Allah Ta'ala bless each and every one of the students, all of you are quite honest in your hard work. Allah Ta'ala bless and preserve the teachers as well for the effort that they're putting in on a daily basis. It does not go to notice Allah Ta'ala, Allah Ta'ala Academy to flourish as well. And for this, by the sake of the beautiful Na'a Sharif, I pray that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will provide the beautiful colors and the effort that they put into this. Allah Ta'ala allow each and every one of our hearts to be enlightened with the image of the beautiful Na'a Sharif as well. And remember, it's the effort that Allah Ta'ala will look at. You know, it's in accordance with that as well. Allah Ta'ala doesn't look at something to be beautiful, something to be, you know, receive kamar. Nothing has to be perfect in the eyes of Allah.